I'm happy to be joined today by Dr. Patricia Saul, who is the principal at the Erdiston Teachers Training College. You have another name? Deputy principal. You have another name? Deputy principal. You're the deputy principal? Yes. Well, good to have you. Thank you for coming. And joining her is Christina Morris, who is an education officer with the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is International Literacy Day, tomorrow. Uh -huh. And there's a very special focus on peace. But before we get to tomorrow and what that whole thing is all about, let, let's give me, Dr. Uh, Saul, some background to International Literacy Day. Okay, International Literacy Day was first celebrated in 1976 by UNESCO following a conference of Minister, ministers of Education that was held in Tehran. Mm -hmm. And coming out of this conference, they determined that September 8th should be celebrated as International Literacy Day. Now this day affords countries an opportunity to heighten awareness about the importance of literacy to personal, social, and national development. Right. On this day, the, sec the Director General of UNESCO issues a message that is read across the world, encouraging individuals and organizations and countries as a whole to demonstrate commitment to literacy and also to promote non-formal education for those persons who might be outside of the school system. A lot of people watching today and a lot of people who think they know really don't quite understand what literacy is. How would you define it? Okay, literacy um, is the ability to use reading, writing, speaking, thinking as tools mm -hmm. to solve problems and to, to, to really deal with situations in life. Now, you can have basic literacy, mm -hmm. which is just the ability to read and to regurgitate what you might have read, but there's also functional literacy, which is the ability to analyze, synthesize, and evaluate information, to think critically, and to really solve problems. Mm -hmm. So it can be looked upon on, on two levels. The one that we are promoting very highly in school is functional literacy, because our societies are changing and becoming more dynamic and more technical logical and if you are not functionally literally then you're not going to be able to function effectively. Christina Morris, yes. there is a concern among many factions of society that because of this functional literacy reading has fallen by the wayside mm -hmm. and in some cases what appears to be those softer social skills how you and I would interact those have also been under threat as a human edu as an education officer within the human resource development and the Ministry of Education what are you doing to ensure mm -hmm. that we are able to retain those truths? Well, as a Ministry of Education, we continue to work very closely with our principals and our teachers because we must remember that they are key persons in the process of educating our citizens. And we continue to work with our principals and our teachers to provide the requisite training and the retraining to ensure that they are exposed current research, mm -hmm. current strategies, all in an effort to ensure that our children are prepared for this technologically driven world that we live in. And um, yes, I am aware of the view that um, reading, not, that not much reading is being done these days. Um, I, however, would take a slightly different view. Some reading is being done, but what is being read has changed mm -hmm. because of the, the, the focus on the technology. We find out that a lot of persons are reading from the Kindle, they're reading from their laptops, right. they're doing a lot of research using the technology. However, I would still want to emphasize the value of picking up that book. And I, in my view, there isn't anything that can replace that experience with reading from a text. We're talking about critical thinking within all of this discussion. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, too many times it seems to be a heavy reliance on technology. Mm -hmm. We Google it, to use that term, it's yeah. in the Bible, not the Bible, yeah. the dictionary now. Yeah. We Google it and suddenly somebody gives us a result. Mm -hmm. The ability within all of this technology to think critically, mm -hmm. as a teacher trainer, what are you doing so that it does not overtake one's ability here between the ears? I think that the 
advances in technology have heightened the need for critical thinking because you now anybody can put something on the net mm -hmm. and you have to be very careful when you download stuff to be able to analyze that and evaluate it to see whether or not it's valid, whether or not the, purpose, the point that's being made by the individual is well articulated. So for me, and, and for us as teacher trainers, we are training our teachers to develop now those critical thinking skills in students. So there's need now for more student participation in lessons, more student presentations, more group work, so that children are now interacting with text in a more practical and a more meaningful way. One of the things I enjoyed while I was in school was English literature, simply because I was able to be what I wanted to be through somebody else's eyes almost. I could live it out. Do you get the sense, and, and I found that I, as a consequence I benefited from such, do you get the sense, Christina, that much of that is still being done where the individual has the opportunity to, to take the text, interpret the text, become the text, and as a consequence, almost live out that text. Mm -hmm. oh Is that yes. still being done heavily? Oh yes. oh yes, our teachers are very competent. They know their business. They know their business. And I, I can say that confidently, that in our classrooms today, our teachers continue to use literature to help our students mm -hmm. to live vicariously through other persons' experiences and to enjoy person some of those similar experiences that you had as a young boy in school. Great. Now, let's link it to peace because that's part of the, the mandate of International uh, Literacy Day. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we question why people take the action they take. Can't you think? Didn't you see it happening? Why did you simply react as opposed to process? Let's talk about how tomorrow will, fa how peace factors into tomorrow. Well, the theme for the day this year is literacy and peace. And Irene Bokova, who is the Director General for UNESCO, in her message actually said, and they want to quote that, she says, literacy is a prerequisite for peace because it carries multiple benefits cutting across the human, cultural, social, political, and economic spheres. So individuals who are literate are less likely to use a knife or a gun to settle disputes because they have language to use. So it is one of the, 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 the factors that we could use to reduce some of the, the, the violent crimes and so on permeating system, uh, our system right now. So across the world tomorrow, um, people will be looking at literacy as a way of creating a peaceful society. Quickly, Christina, in the few seconds that we have remaining, mm -hmm. there are persons who are not within the formal school setting who want still to be able to benefit mm -hmm. from all that this exposure will allow. Mm -hmm. What opportunities are there for human development in that way? For human development, specifically um, outside of the formal structure, we have a number of vocational programs going on across the island. Um, the community focus is still very strong within our churches, the community development division. So there are a number of opportunities out there for those who are outside of the formal structure to still be immersed in literacy activities. I'd like to thank you both. Christina Morris, Education Officer with the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. Dr. Patricia Salda, Deputy Principal of the Erdison Teachers Training College. Tomorrow's International Literacy Day, Literacy and peace. I want you to take time today to think more deeply on that linkage and how it can make a difference to you. Think about it so that tomorrow you become it. Thank you ladies. It's seven minutes to seven. I'm back with you in the pine while Pearson soaks up all the excellence at the Garrison Secondary School and to talk to us a little bit about how they're going to celebrate this wonderful milestone after those doors were opened in 1975 is Kathy Ann Scott, Kathy Scott, the chairperson of the Garrison School Alumni Celebrations and the Public Relations Officer is Stephen Alkins. Welcome and congratulations. Happy anniversary. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And you're all resplendent in your colors and your badges as if there was ever any doubt as to where you came from. <laughs> Let's start with a really significant date. It was significant for you before 10 years ago and it's going to be even more significant now, uh, I suspect, for the next decade, September 11th. Um, people will remember it for one thing, mostly, but you have a special reason for remembering it as well as a Garrison alum. Um, yes, the school was officially open on 
September 11th, 1975, by Sir Lloyd Erskine Sandiford, who was then the Minister of Education. So for us at the Garrison, September 11th is not such a bad day. And you just need to reflect on the good things that have happened and not necessarily focus so much on the bad. So for us, it's a beautiful day and we're going to have our service at the St. Matthias Anglican Church at 8.45 on Sunday morning. And that will kick our week of activities off. You say a week of activities, but you have several weeks and several activities. Yeah. Stephen, tell me a little bit more. A the tell me a little bit more about things like football nights, the mentorship day, um, and the cricket competition and line. We can't have cricket without a line. Well, exactly. <laughs> I think one of the toss up is that the school um, games department are the ones who are responsible for the for the entertainment in terms of the food and drinks and so forth. But as Kathy said, it is not a week of activity, it's actually six weeks of activity. So we're officially beginning on September 11th with a church service. We always like to give God thanks. Of course. You know, bless us and, and thank him for the school itself, right? Um, from there, we're moving on to membership day. Um, this is between Mr. Farley and our president. That's his baby, so this is where we, the alumni, work with the first farmers and the second farmers in terms of the transition because people forget when you when I went to the school uh, my mother just bought me the clothes bought me the bag and took me to you school off. and said I'm going to come back for you at five past three be outside that gate don't let me have to come looking for you oh dear and that was it I had to learn I had to know well you can't go here you can't go there um, but what we did this time is that we want to work with the children where we would teach them and guide them and because as little children, you know, you, you primary school is one thing, but secondary school is like a whole different world. Oh boy, these children, you know, these big ones, then the unfairness that some of these big children say, um, yeah, give me your lunch money. Mm -hmm. um, no, you can't, you know, so we want to take them through that process, you know. And that's where the mentorship program came in. Well, it also speaks to um, passing on a legacy of, of caring and loyalty, because if that's how you are treated, more than likely you will want to treat somebody else that way. Okay. Kathy, let's um, move further on down into the six weeks. There's a career showcase as well where, I mean, we, 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 don't, we, can only, we only need to look within our walls here at the CBC to see how many different careers have been spawned from the foundation that was laid at the garrison. We have Zelma Daisley in the uh, accounts department and, and outside of CBC, uh, Tito Ellis, who plays with the Royal Barbados Police Force Band uh, and Neil Burnett who started with that same steel band that we saw this morning. Um, it wasn't his instrument of choice but he moved on to be very successful with Crossfire. So, I mean, the career showcase um, you could easily pull one from each of those categories. Tell me who is going to be there, which children are invited, which year levels are invited, and how you plan to make it exciting for them. Okay, the career showcase spans across the entire school. It's going to be for the entire day. It's going to start at 9.30 and finish when school finishes. And it's going to encompass every career possible. We have a special place for the arts, which would be painting, drama, dance, that sort of thing. We have the professions, um, accountants, the teachers, people working in marketing. Um, as you know, there are so many members of the Royal Barbados Police Force and the Barbados Defence Force who are past students of the school, and they will be there as well. We have the prison service coming through. Um, good morning, Mr. Ryan Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a slew of lawyers, some of them I, I didn't even know about, and they'll be coming forward as well. Then the hairdressers, the cosmetologists, um, the doctors will be coming forward. And those people who are in, in entrepreneurship, and this is the direction the government wants the country to go, so we have our entrepreneurs coming forward. And it will span a wide spectrum of careers. It's not a typical career showcase. We have our stilt walkers and the mother sallies and so on. So it's going to be very interesting and exciting. It sounds that way to me. It sounds like you're spoiled for choice as to which one to choose.